When it comes to the right to free expression, college is very different from high school. As adults and as college students, you are more likely to be exposed to a much wider variety of ideas and points of view than you were exposed to in high school, both inside and outside the classroom. In a learning community, everyone should strive to promote mutual respect in how people interact with one another. To do this, students need to be mindful that each member of the community comes with a unique set of experiences and viewpoints, and that they hold significant weight for each of us. That's why sometimes, despite the goal of maintaining civil discourse, you may encounter expression that you find offensive or unpleasant. This is an unavoidable result of everything from the protests, debates, and speakers you will encounter while in college, to the meaningful everyday discussions you will have with friends. Offensive speech on campus can be a very challenging topic to talk about. But one thing to keep in mind is that the First Amendment strictly limits a public university's regulation of speech. In the United States, a public university is an extension of the government. The First Amendment does not permit the government, including public universities, to police or regulate your speech and writings for the wrong opinion or belief. But guaranteeing your freedoms also means guaranteeing the freedoms of thought and expression of those with whom you most strongly disagree. Though it is understandable to want to protect those we love from hateful speech, remember that a principle that allows for the censorship of others ultimately allows those others to censor you too. The Supreme Court reflected this reality and stated in their 2017 Mattel v. Tam opinion, The proudest boast of our free speech jurisprudence is that we protect the freedom to express the thought that we hate. We will now be watching two short clips featuring New York Law School professor Nadine Strassen, a renowned expert on civil liberties, former president of the ACLU and author of Hate, Why We Should Resist It with Free Speech, Not Censorship. Professor Strassen will discuss the problems with censorship particularly how it's been used to silence minorities, women, and other disenfranchised groups and unpopular ideas. Take a moment to consider how your concept of what is offensive might differ from your neighbor's perspective or that of someone else from across the world. In this first video, Professor Strassen discusses the dangers of giving government or university officials the power to regulate speech. That any power to regulate offensive speech would be used against the marginalized groups that the First Amendment was intended to protect. Through all the research I did for my book, I was more persuaded than ever that censorship, no matter how well intended, actually does more harm than good. It brings attention and sympathy to the hate mongers that they otherwise would not have received. And again, there's this consistent pattern that it's advocates of social justice, law reform, equality rights, and members of minority groups who always bear the disproportionate brunt of censorship. And I want to point out that that is no coincidence. It follows from the very premises of those who uh, advocate for hate speech laws. Uh, They argue, and, and, and I agree, that we have ongoing problems of discrimination and structural uh, injustice in our so-called criminal justice system. Uh, Studies consistently show institutional systemic biases against people of color, for example. Um, There have been studies in the civil justice system which also show um, in-baked biases against women uh, and other uh, traditionally disempowered, uh, marginalized groups. Uh, All kinds of studies sadly document the so-called implicit or unconscious bias that all of us are subject to. You know, the good news is we are working to overcome all of these problems, but in the meantime, why in the world would we hand over to these discriminatory systems and structures and enforcing individuals such a subjective, inescapably subjective power as deciding which speech is hateful and therefore should be punished. 
Uh, we have calls today from government officials, uh, law enforcement officers saying that Black Lives Matter activism and advocacy is hate speech. Pipeline protesters, those who are protesting abuses within the criminal justice system, have been accused of hate speech and have had their messages taken down as hate speech by the social media companies that are enforcing their um, so-called standards against hate speech. So it's a very dangerous tool that especially those of us who are advocating for equality and dignity and diversity and inclusivity, we should be especially uh, wary of using it. And the good news is that so much can be accomplished in, in so many other ways. As you just heard, Professor Strassen makes a very strong case against allowing the government to censor speech. Remember, public universities fall into the category of government actors. Allowing those in power to determine what is and what is not offensive enough to be regulated, an exceedingly vague concept, is a dangerous path that can end up hurting the very causes many of us would like to support. As Professor Strassen explained, censoring speech can have, and often has had, unintended consequences, such as drawing more attention to that speech or suppressing the voices of minorities and minority ideas. Throughout history, speech that challenges the status quo has been viewed as offensive by many of those who hold power. In the past, civil rights leaders could be arrested just for organizing bus boycotts or attending a mass demonstration. Now, that kind of recourse is saved for, let's say, a protester carrying a brick outside of a church threatening to break the windows. The government still reserves the right to take action against those who engage in a pattern of behavior with the intent of making someone fear for their safety or who are threatening violence. In this next video, Professor Strassen will explain that, despite protections for hate speech, it can cross a line and cause such imminent harm that it is no longer protected. Government must remain neutral to the content, the viewpoint, the idea, the message of the speech. No matter how hated or despised or loathed it might be, the answer to it is not suppression, but more speech. Answer back. That said, it's really important to recognize that hate speech or speech, I, mean, I, I use it the way the term is, is used in everyday speech, speech that conveys hateful or discriminatory or stereotyped ideas on the basis of factors such as race, religion, gender, and so forth. Hate speech, along with speech of any other content, when you get beyond the content or the message and look at a certain context, it may be punished if, under all the facts and circumstances in a particular context, that speech presents an emergency, uh, specifically if it directly causes certain specific, imminent, serious harm, such as intentional incitement of imminent violence, where the violence is likely to happen imminently, or a true threat where the speaker means to instill a, a reasonable fear on the part of the audience that they are going to be subject to attack, or targeted, persistent, pervasive harassment or bullying. So our law gives a lot of tools to government officials, including uh, at public universities, to punish hateful speech in the precise context when it causes the greatest danger of actual harm. As Professor Strassen noted, offensive speech enjoys strong constitutional protections, but the right to free speech is not completely unlimited. Speech loses its protection when it is directed to and likely to cause imminent serious harm. Or when speech is a true threat, defined as statements where the speaker means to communicate a serious expression of an intent to commit an act of unlawful violence to a particular individual or group of individuals, or when speech is used as a tool to engage in unlawful harassment. Harassment is defined as behavior that is so severe, pervasive, and objectively offensive that it undermines an individual's ability to access university resources or opportunities. When that happens, 
please utilize campus resources. Your university is here to support you. When starting your journey as a college student, it is important not just to remember that your university is committed to freedom of speech for all its students, but to understand why your community has taken this path. We hope you are looking forward to the vibrant conversations and debates that follow.